Ah, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It is once again time for the Backstage Slam Podcast. I am your host, Josh, joined in spirit by everybody else, although Amber will be here in just a moment. Uh, Welcome. I'm still here. Oh, good. Okay. Say hi to the folks, Amber. Hi, folks. Here we are. It is Saturday night, and we just came off of the 2020 WWE Draft. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't, I don't want to say the draft, in essence, in essence, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but, I mean, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to everything in a minute as we uh, break down everything that happened. I think... I think the the biggest news, in my opinion, out of the draft is Vince McMahon spited me once again. It's like the man lives to torment me, me personally. I've said for months, the New Day's not split. No, nobody's going to split the New Day. Who, who, who would split the New Day up? And next thing you know, Big E is... Torn from the warm embrace of his comrades and separated. Why? Because they want to make him a bigger star. I don't know how how, how he could be a bit bigger star. He could hold higher titles. He, he they could have done that with him in the group. So it it hurts my soul on a very deep level to know that the new day is incomplete. How can you have the new day without Big E? It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm more upset that uh, Mickey James is a free agent. At least I get that. Because she's injured at the moment. And I don't, I don't think any of the injured people were drafted. She's think, not uh, injured. Some, somebody got uh, half an Uso team, so I, I imagine the other one will join them when they're recovered. Let's see. Mickey James. Mickey James, undraft. Oh, maybe. She, okay. She's not, not injured, they just didn't draft her. Okay. Hmm. I wonder why. And they want to give Lana a chance for the championship. Come on! Oh, we've been down that right before. We, we, we don't... We really don't need to do that again. And the funny part is, when Lana first was getting her championship opportunities... Uh, we discussed it here, and I was like, you know what? It's not the worst um, female performance I've seen in the ring. Not by far. In fact, it was it was pretty passable. And it, somehow, the the match quality, in my opinion, did not go up. In fact, it kind of deteriorated a bit. And now, with with months out of being in some sort of hyper-competitive atmosphere on live TV. It, it, I, I have no idea what to expect. Because once again, I did not watch... Actually, I did not actually watch Raw or SmackDown. Although that's probably going to change pretty soon. I re-subbed to Hulu. Um, you know, fall season starts, you get the new shows. And I still don't want to pay for cable. And I don't want to hook up an antenna to my TV just so I can watch something with commercials. I can't. I can't do it. But now now I that I have uh, Hulu back, I'll, I'll be able to watch the a truncated version of Raw and, uh, and catch up on SmackDown the next day for each of these shows. And, you know, it, it'll, it'll be nice... I think I may not actually 
like everything I'm seeing on screen, but at the very least, I think just getting back in the routine of it will make me feel, you know, in general, just better. Uh, I don't know about you, Amber, but it seems like the last, I don't know, the last month, month and a half, it's just it's just been a crummy feeling in general. And I've, I've noticed that's been going around. People uh, have a general sense of malaise. And honestly, from the wrestling that I have actually watched over the last six weeks or so, it, it kind of shows up there. It It's almost like nobody wants to be where they are no matter what. And I don't, I don't know if it's just me kind of projecting my own feelings onto uh, the performers or, or if it's an actual thing. But it just seems to me nobody is really finding a rhythm or or the proper gear to be in. Uh, what do you think, Amber? Do you, am I nuts? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, guess that, uh, got caught on, uh, a little bit of a, uh, an away time. So, how about you? You in the chat. Am I nuts for thinking these things? Um, let me know. In the, in the meantime, yeah, the WWE draft happened this year. I have all of the draft picks right in front of me. Some of them, some of them really make sense. Some of them not so much, especially when it comes to order and you know, sometimes you think you can get really a good idea of where the company stands with certain people. When, when, it, when it comes to where they're drafted. And this this year, I don't I, I don't know. The the top top ten, sure. Yeah, you can definitely see, you know, they're putting emphasis on certain people. But there are we'll say some people that are conspicuously absent from the higher higher tiers of the draft. So, without further ado, uh, let's get started going over some of these some of these draft results. You know what? All of these draft results. And you know what? Let's let's start. Hmm. Let's start with the rules. Uh, I'm reading directly from Wikipedia. While we know it's not the most reliable source in the world, it is not something I think anybody would go out of the way to, you know, jack up on purpose. So, uh, that's where I'm getting this language from. Uh, Due to the length of each show, for every two picks, SmackDown gets Raw. uh, SmackDown gets Raw receives three, so it's a three to two ratio. Uh, based on the number of hours on the show. And, you know, that's that's the way it's been going for a while. Uh, tag teams and stables will count as one pick unless Fox or USA, in conjunction with WWE, wants to speci- specifically pick one wrestler from the group, i.e. Big E. Uh, any undraft wrestlers will immediately be declared free agents and are able to sign with a brand of their choosing. And we'll we'll get to more uh, discussion about that later, especially when it comes to Mickey James, a personal, heartfelt favorite between myself and Amber. So, starting with night one, which took place on SmackDown eight. Days ago, Raw got the per- first pick. USA got the first pick with Drew McIntyre. Now, 
That is that is no surprise, right? You pick the WWE champion, and that shows a lot of faith, you know, at least storyline wise, that Drew the Tree is going to be the guy. Um, no qualms with this pick; it, it, it makes absolute, and, and the second pick does as well. When uh, Roman got picked to go to SmackDown. Makes sense. He's the top guy. The two top guys go in the top two spots. And I'm going to say that even the third, even the third pick makes absolute sense because Raw picks up Asuka. There, there are some people that might be surprised that the Raw Women's Champion went so high up. But I think it's it's a very good um, symbolic gesture that you know that women's wrestling is still still we'll say top five material when it comes to the draft, and maybe we'll we'll get a good program moving forward. Uh, I don't have my hopes too high up, but at the very least. Maybe, right? I lost my window. All right. Now, this is where things get really weird, okay? Because next up, SmackDown has an opportunity here. Um, they did, they did, didn't, didn't go for the U.S. champion. They didn't go for the IC champion. They didn't even go for their own women's champion, no. SmackDown picked up Seth Rollins from Raw. Now, just just from a general manager standpoint, if, you know, buying into this whole thing, uh, living the kayfabe, you look at Seth Rollins and you say, what a, what a tremendous athlete, but he doesn't bring any titles to the table. He has amazing matches, yes, but he's also a like very well known pain in the ass. So Seth Rollins at number four. I guess from a report card perspective, yeah, it makes sense, but from a hardware perspective, no titles. He he's got nothing to bring over you know, a U.S. champion, intercontinental champion, a tag team champion, or once again, your very own SmackDown Women's Champion. Just a really, really weird. He he goes so very high up. So, I'm wondering if that's uh, a sign of, I don't know, it does put Seth and Roman back on SmackDown or back together on the same show. And they're both, you know, <laughs> awful people. Maybe we're getting a new Shield type faction. That would, you know, that's my speculation. Just thinking out loud, really. Um, after that. We got the first faction pick of the night, and again, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything about about Seth Rollins. It's it is what it is. Um, he does everything pretty pretty immaculately, you know, as far as character goes. But from a logistics standpoint, you picked the one guy over the one, two, three, four, four talents in the hurt business and one of them holds the United States championship you passed up on four guys and a title to pick up one guy with nothing so the hurt business uh, consisting of uh, MVP Bobby Lashley Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin Go to Raw. Uh, well, rather they stay on Raw. 
while Seth Rollins goes to SmackDown. I think uh, Raw really made out with that one by getting to keep the U.S. Championship and four guys. And then they pulled their own little coup by snatching a SmackDown talent and throwing a red shirt on him, and that is AJ Styles. Another guy. You, you would think SmackDown would want to shore that up before Seth Rollins, but no, no, they, they did not. AJ Styles, another guy, though, I'll make the argument. No titles. Yeah, it's former world champion. Yeah, you want to get your your main event scene figured out, but you also want to make sure your champions are safe. And once again, I know this is all scripted, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah I, I get it, but, you know, make it make sense. Make it make sense. That's it. That's all I ask. Um, number seven, SmackDown gets to pick. And, again, this this doesn't make sense to me because they picked Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. Not their women's champion. No, they, they picked Sasha. And they're, therefore, putting, putting a higher value on Sasha Banks over... They're women's champion. Who does that? Oi. And in yet a, another inexplicable move afterwards, Raw gets to pick, and they pick Naomi. They pick Naomi. I'm... If 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 I were running a WWE draft, say we did one on the show, which which would would have been cool, you know, we should we should try doing that sometime. But if we were doing it, I, not not to speak ill against Naomi because she's very talented, but she would not be cracking my top ten. Especially ahead of an intercontinental champion, a women's champion, and two sets of tag team champions. It wouldn't happen. No, no I would definitely not be using a pick on Naomi in the top ten. Would, would she be somebody I want on my show? Absolutely. I definitely want Naomi, Naomi on the show, but I, I just, I wouldn't feel... Like, I wouldn't have a chance later on. It it seemed like it would be a pretty safe bet Naomi would be available later. And after that, in... I don't know, maybe... Maybe the, the videos were convincing, but someone that has... I mean, very, very, very little main roster experience... Um, gets picked number nine in, in Bianca Belair. She's going to SmackDown. SmackDown picks up Bianca Belair. Why? <laughs> you just picked up two women before you even have a SmackDown ch- uh, women's champion secured. I mean, if I was if I was Raw, I would have had Bailey snatched up so fast. And made it the place for the women's title. Unify them and make it the place. That that's only though if the competition were legit. Doesn't I, uh, it? It's frustrating that. Um, these things happen. And I don't understand why. I just I just realized that um Amber was disconnected from the from the call 
And yeah. Okay. I'm back. I was wondering why it was just me. It it kicked me off and then I tried calling back and then it wouldn't let me back on. So I was like, uh, okay, I'll wait. Um, have have you been able to catch anything that I've been saying? No. Okay. Long story short. You know what? I'm just going to uh, say this one real quick. Raw picked up Nia, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, the women's tag team champions. A good, safe pick. Definitely it, a top ten pick. Except they're going to float between brands. Right. But, you know, for um, for the sake of... Of having a home show, uh, picking him up. See, see, now you just busted it wide open. I mean, I've com- completely changed my mind. It uh, doesn't make any damn sense. We're going to be floating between shows, so I guess we'll call this one a home. In the meantime, Bailey's undrafted. Sami Zayn's undrafted. The Street Profits are undrafted. Whoever has the tag team, the other tag team titles, undrafted. It, I, yeah. This is supposed to be a top ten, and that's basically what I've been saying um, uh, throughout so far. Sasha Banks, number seven. Naomi, number eight. Bianca Belair, number nine. And 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 with the SmackDown Women's Champions, that's a that's a pretty good run of women there. Um, but none of them are champions except. Nia and Shayna. And the SmackDown Women's Champion is still, at this point, in, you know, going over this draft, still undrafted, not in the top ten. SmackDown's picking up women, but they have no title to go for. You know, at this point during this coverage. So imagine... If I was watching this live and I'm like, why, why, why you, you don't, you didn't give them anything to, to shoot for. They have nothing to aim for. There is no title. And if I was raw, um, like I said, I would have snatched it up so fast. Oh, Bailey's still on the board. We got to get her. We got to get that title over here. We got to have the women's championship. We will unify the titles, and there will only be one. But that's looking at it from like a, a realistic perspective, which, again, I get it. It's entertainment, but please make it make sense. It doesn't uh, ever make sense. They're they're doing this this sport like presentation, right? And it, it it's just goo goo bananas. And I, I, I just want a reason to kind of buy into it. And they they don't want to give that to me because Vince loves to spite me (sighs) that's probably true it's very much true very much very much um number 11 Ricochet good good choice stays on Raw um again Picked before an IC champion, tag champion, whatever. But at least he's there. Number twelve, Jay Uso. Not even, not even the Usos. Just, just Jay. Now there's no doubt in my mind. Jimmy's going to wind up on SmackDown when he's able to get back in the ring. But at least, at the very least, secure both. Just say we want the Usos. We understand Jimmy's hurt, but. We got Jay, so uh, we're still going to utilize him. 
Get those get those two people for the one pick. Why why superficially pick one? Number thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. Mandy Rose stays on raw. After what last week before the draft officially started, she was drafted to Raw and this said she's what she yeah, I guess she that counted and she was up for draft again, so she went from SmackDown to Raw to Raw. Before the SmackDown women's champion. Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio move from Raw to SmackDown at number fourteen. I understand they've tagged together, but Amber, do you think Ray and Dominic are going to be some sort of tag team force no. of some kind? Yeah, no. I don't. I don't either. So it is once again baffling to me some of these some of these decisions, although. I suppose if if you were just to bundle people and say, hey, they've tagged before, so we should, you know what, not not even going to waste my brain power. At least this one makes sense. The Miz and, Mor- Miz and John Morrison move from SmackDown to Raw. Now, I'm only going to say it makes sense because, you know, they are an established tag team. They are good talents, but here's... Here's my big issue. Up until this point, we've had three tag teams drafted. You know what? Yeah, yeah, three. And none of them are... Oh, well, scratch that. One of them is a tag team champion, and that's the women's tag team champion. So two male tag teams were picked up before the champions for either brand. So Vince, please, make it make sense. But that's going to be rectified here right now as Kofi and Xavier Woods are drafted to Raw as the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, although to fix the situation to make them no longer Raw Tag Team or SmackDown Tag Team Champions. They swapped titles and became the uh, the Raw Tag Team Champions. Yeah, just swapped them out. No match, just... Hey, rather than making this a big thing, let's uh, just trade. Like, okay. And unfortunately... In some bizarre twist of fate, Big E went next. Staying on SmackDown. Now, my hope is, and and if I were holding the book, this is how I would get to WrestleMania, um, where Big E would face Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. That would be my main event. Uh, Drew, a guy that just wants to, you know, wants to hang on to the title that he's, you know, fought for, and and he was denied his WrestleMania moment in front of the fans. He just wants to have his moment. Versus Big E, a guy that was torn from his friends, and that he 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 only wants to go back to his friends and the only way to do that is to beat Drew McIntyre and become the WWE champion so if he wins he gets to stay on Raw and be with his buddies if he loses they're separated for good so steal that idea because I think it's a good one a lot of a lot of heart, a lot of emotion. I like it. I think I'll cry if it happens. 
Um, and, and, and another wonderful turn of events, Dana Brooke gets drafted and gets to stay on Raw before the SmackDown Women's Champion. So, yeah. Pretty random stuff going on here. Let's see. We have a number 19, Otis. <sighs> Weird that they break up heavy machinery for what I, I have no idea. But he is, it makes sense from a he's the money in the bank contract holder. Um, man, I love, I, I, I love Otis to death, but that, this whole thing is, is... I, I have no idea. I, I still have no inkling. And I don't have an iota of a feeling that he's ever going to be Universal Champion or, or WWE Champion. So the fact that he's held on to the contract for so long is confusing to me at, at the best. So, Otis makes it uh, the top 20. In, in rounding out that top 20, Raw, it's uh, its final pick. Angel Garza gets to stay. Now, there are a lot of massive massive names that that did not get drafted during those that initial 20 and you know names like Dana Brooke and Naomi and Angel Garza being picked to the top 20 is it's what it's what it's weird to say the least it's 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 weird there are former world champions on there. There are current champions on there that didn't go drafted. I don't get it. I don't know. Anyway, there there was a supple- supplemental draft that took place on Talking Smack. Um, at 21... Uh, Umberto Carrillo uh, went to Raw. 22nd pick. Uh, Murphy goes to SmackDown. Um, you know, making sure that the Mysterios um, can continue whatever story is going on there. Uh, Drew Lock. Drew. Drew Lock. Drew Gulak goes to Raw with a 23rd pick. And Kalisto goes to, or stays on SmackDown with uh, the 24th pick. And Tucker goes to Raw. So that was the end of the first night of the WWE Draft 2020. And as a result of this... Um, Kalisto stayed on SmackDown and Lucha House Party Grand Matalik and Lince Dorado were drafted to Raw so that's another group that is uh, you know it, it looked like a while for for a minute there we were going to start seeing a lot of good trios action that's that's been a mainstay on the indies or um, we'll say you know New Japan Ring of Honor like, you know, those those types of companies uh, seeing trios, I mean, some companies have titles for trios, you know, six man tag team champions and, and, and things like that. Um, and and I guess that's gone now because the the new day is down to being a standard tag team, and Lucha House Party is no longer a trio. That's a standard tag team. Not, Hmm. It, it would have been nice to see the WWE branch out and and do something 
not, I don't want to say different because I'm literally saying other people are doing it, but to go in a different direction than they're used to would, would have been interesting. Uh, I would love to see trios titles in WWE. I would love to see one set of Raw titles uh, and one set of SmackDown titles. The Either or, one of them is a trios, one of them is a duos. Make them unique, make them their own thing. That would, that would interest me as far as tag team divisions go. And uh, we're going to... Weird. Pick it up on Raw. The October 12th edition. Um, Excuse me, sorry. I mean, uh, breathe, breathe into your ears there. Unless you listeners liked it. Nope, nope, sorry. Creepy, sorry. Um... <laughs> Um, in on the uh, on the second night of the draft, you know, it it sort of makes sense again ish. Um, it's almost like an entirely new draft with an entirely new numbering system, and the top talents make sense in in the numbers here. But you look at this top ten and you're like, how come none of these people were picked on the first night? How can Dana Brooke, someone whom, you know, I like to watch. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to talk any talent. But how can Dana Brooke go above any of these names that I'm about to say? It doesn't... You know what? I'm just a broken record at this point, so... Uh, going number one on night two, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. It would have been hilarious if, <laughs> you know, Bray Wyatt got drafted to Raw and The Fiend stayed on SmackDown. That, that would have been funny. Um, and if this were, like, 99, <laughs> it would have been pretty funny to see the three faces of Foley going to different <laughs> different shows. Um, I digress. But... The Fiend Bray Wyatt goes to Raw again before the IC Champion, before the Raw Tag Team Champions. Um, he is the number one pick. And finally, finally, on night two, on Raw, Bailey gets drafted to SmackDown and stays on SmackDown. The, the SmackDown Women's Champion finally gets drafted number two on night two now if this was night two one that'd be a banger of a pick but this is night two she should have been she should she should have been picked up way before then um number three Randy Orton stays on raw Sure, whatever it is, what it is, he's just going to be wherever he wants. Number four, finally. The Raw Tag Team Champions are drafted to SmackDown. And after the title swap, are now the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I'm pretty sure I said that right. Um, Charlotte Flair... It says she was drafted from Raw to Raw. And then it's basically saying she's staying on Raw. But last I checked, wasn't she in NXT? Or did I miss something? Hmm. No, she she's on Raw now. Either way. So, uh, number six. Number six, Braun Strowman is going to Raw. Moving him away from... Braun uh, Roman Reigns and and other such big people, but putting him directly in the path of Drew McIntyre. So we're gonna see. I think an interesting. Uh, you know, I want to say this. Is, if I had to guess, I'd say this is the Rumble match right here. Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre. And this is the title match of the Rumble. 
At number seven, Daniel Bryan stays on SmackDown. There's a guy. There's a guy that, uh... Well, what I did was... The, the original idea for the episode was taking, you know, the results of the draft and kind of building our own road to WrestleMania. I, I put together the cards. I, yeah, I assume there's going to be two two nights this year, just or next year, just like this year. Um, and you see... Uh, I have... Where is it? Yeah, Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Champion or Universal Championship. I assume Roman's going to be like the biggest bastard in the business, um, just the heeliest of all heels, and Daniel Bryan will of course be the babyest of all baby faces. So it makes sense. This is this is a great pairing for WrestleMania. And it would be a good match to to see in uh, 2021. Um, number eight, Matt Riddle is drafted to Pro. Sure, okay, whatever. Good talent, good guy, I guess. Um, Kevin Owens is moving from Raw to SmackDown with a number nine pick. So the Kevin Owens show is going to be a SmackDown thing from now on. Jeff Hardy moves from SmackDown to Raw, where he will just continue to do the same thing uh, until his contract expires. Number 11. You know, as far as numbers go, this is, I guess, a good a good um, acquisition. Uh, Retribution picks up Mustafa Ali, T-Bar May, Slapjack, and Reckoning. Um, yeah, the worst the worst ever whatever it is they are uh, and by the way for my um, fantasy Wrestlemania 37 my fantasy booking my I don't know I have them up against Braun Strowman in, in a handicap match where he would uh, summarily destroy them all and they would never be seen again Uh, number 12, Lars Sullivan stays on SmackDown. There's there's a guy that, considering some things, uh, some people some people might wonder why he's even employed at all. Some people would. Not me. Some people. But I, it kind of sucks that he went before... A guy that's going to be a fan favorite. He is going to be at the Mick Foley levels of adoration. And that is Keith Lee, who goes at lucky number 13, the Mandy Rose position, uh, staying on Raw. King Corbin stays on SmackDown at number 14. Um, Alexa Bliss is going to Raw. Joining Bray Wyatt, although... I don't I don't know what the criteria is to be considered a team but I would imagine somebody could have done something to to make sure that Bray and Alexa wind up together being drafted together that would be that would be a coup for a 2 for 1 deal but no she goes number 15 and so far um, the second second female of the night to to be drafted at the number fifteen spot, Elias, the guy that I forgot even even existed, is drafted at number sixteen to Raw. Uh, honestly, I thought I was already on Raw. Raw, so I, I I'm I'm either out of touch or I, I don't know because. I haven't thought about Elias in a long time. The bad part is he's good. He's good. He knows how to get a crowd going, but they they really don't give him much to work with as far as, you know, just being a winner. And no matter what anybody says, whether it's Bruce Pritchard or, or Jim Ross or, or 
whoever. Wins and losses matter. And it, it doesn't really matter in the record keeping official sports kind of way, but when it comes to perspective of fans and Yeah, that's pretty much it. When it comes to the perspective of the fans, people will cheer a winner. It's like uh, when Braun Strowman was uh, was squashing um, the likes of the Ellsworths, is Ellsworths, and then got hooked up with Roman in, in, in a program. It, it was a perfect storm of this guy wins and we want him to beat Roman. So, what happened? He became a huge baby face. And that is okay. It, it's the people that should should have some, some, some sort of voice. And the only time it really works when you go against the grain, the grain being the will of the people, is when you're trying to get somebody over as, you know, a, a mega heel. Because the goal is to piss people off, by hook or by crook. And if you can do that by having somebody win over and over again by whatever means, then yeah, keep going with that. And, and Elias never got that momentum going. He never got the wins. People still enjoyed the hell out of out of watching it perform, but they never really got anywhere. I had to take a, take a sip of the old water. Okay, so, <clears throat> where was I? Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, the Intercontinental Champion. Pick number 17, 19, um, night 2. 17, night 2. Let that sink in for a second. 17, 17th pick of night 2. Night 2. The IC Champion. You heard all of those names that were were picked before, so it was like a lot of people. Let's say a lot of people. This does not make your your championships look so groovy to know that the title is being picked so far down on the second night. There's no reason in the world why every champion should have picked on night, night one. You know what? There is a new merchandise store for Simicore Studios and by proxy, of course, the Backstage Slam. And that that's going to be one of the shirts. I, I will have it up and ready to go by tomorrow. And it's going to say something simple like, make it make sense. So make sure you follow uh, all of the social media links to check that out. Because I think there's more than one of you disenfranchised wrestling fans out there that will agree. Let's see. Lacey Evans going to Raw. Cesaro and Shinsuke moving, well, not moving, but staying a unit. Trapped together, staying on SmackDown. Sheamus moving to Raw. Nikki Cross. Oh, Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross of the 21st pick going to Raw. And I'm happy about that. Because now I don't have to choose between Bailey and Nikki Cross. 
It's a beautiful situation. My conscience will be clear. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode move as a unit to SmackDown from Raw. Okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, Truth stays on Raw. Apollo Crews, the guy that was just challenging for the United States Championship, moves from Raw to SmackDown. 24th of night two. I'm not saying he needs to be a higher pick. I'm just saying his momentum probably could have carried him higher than some people on this list. Um, Dabocado uh, went from being a free agent to now a raw talent. Tadis O'Neill stays on Raw. Carmella stays on SmackDown. Peyton Royce stays on Raw. Aleister Black Raw to SmackDown. At number 29. And number 30. Number 30. Akira Tozawa staying on Raw. Now, once again, there was a supplemental draft on Raw Talk afterwards, and that had five picks. Lana stayed on Raw. Natalia moved over to SmackDown. Number 32, Riddick Moss stayed on Raw. Number 33, the Riot Squad, consisting of Ruby Wright and Liv Morgan, uh, went from Raw to SmackDown. And Arturo Ruas is moving from NXT to Raw. So that is your... WWE 2020 draft. Um, we are. Let's see. Uh, free agents. Several several wrestlers who were made free agents due to injury, inactivity, or not being drafted during their draft pool. The chart is organized by date. So. Um, maybe half of what I've said is uh, complete nonsense because, like I said, I, I didn't catch this live. And hell, I didn't watch it at all. Um, so maybe certain talents were not available to be drafted on night one. Is that what I'm gathering here? Because um, that's the only way this any of this makes any sense. It's uh, only... These titles were available to draft on night one, and only these titles were available to draft on night two. Then, you know, then that actually makes sense. So, okay, WWE, if that is correct, you made it made sense. I'm still making the shirt, by the way. I'm still making it because it applies to a lot of other things. But, you know what? I'll give you a pass if that, if that is the case. And I wish somebody, somebody in the chat would let me know if that may, that, that is the case or not. It would be nice. Um, okay, so Retaliation was quietly moved from Retribution and the Draft Pool Night 2. Um, basically, Mercedes Martinez is going back to next team. Good. Good. Absolutely good. Um, Shorty G went undrafted uh, during his night, but was subsequently announced as a SmackDown pick on social media. Lucha House Party, Raw, we talked about that. Billy K going to SmackDown. Um, Eric um, from the Viking Raiders will stay on Raw. Tamina stays on SmackDown. Salida Vega moves to SmackDown from Raw. Andrade is undrafted. He's, I guess, just a free agent. And Becky Lynch listed but not drafted due to maternity. And Big Show probably didn't feel like he shows up enough to draft. So he'll just do what he does always and just shows up. Whatever. Um, Bo Dallas? Not drafted. 
The Forgotten Sons. <laughs> oh, that just that joke just writes itself. The Forgotten Sons were forgotten. Um, <laughs> um, Ivar uh, not drafted uh, due to injury. Jimmy Uso not drafted due to injury. Jinder Mahal undrafted due to injury. Kane is, of course, mayor of Knox County. And I thought he retired anyway. Uh, Maurice. Was, did, did somebody think Maurice would be drafted? Mickey James. That's that's the one right there that doesn't make any sense. Because Maurice uh, hasn't been active in years. But Mickey James. Mickey James is like was so close to becoming yet again women's champion uh, on on a couple, a couple of occasions uh since her return and you know quite frankly I'm kind of kind of upset that they never pulled the trigger and let her be champion I know I'm not alone in thinking that as I'm sure a lot of people out there feel the same way now finally Mojo Raleigh went on draft and I guess his um, friendship <laughs> with, with, with Gronk uh, didn't get him the attention that it should have because quite frankly you know what I'm not even saying that sarcastically being friends with Gronkowski um, and having him sign with the WWE and making him 24-7 champion that was that was the key to Gronk becoming, like, bigger, right? And and the interesting thing about all of this is I think Major Rollin has has a lot of talent. And he's certainly got a lot of energy, but I don't I don't know what it is that's missing about um, Mojo Mojo's uh, gimmick, but it, it's missing something. And maybe, maybe being the, the the alpha male, not not to infringe on anybody's gimmick, but that that type of personality, right, where he's just cool, instead of just in, instead of over enthused man child, uh, you know, just someone that's cool, someone that hangs out with Gronk. He could do a lot of really cool things. And he could still have a very solid career if they just kind of tweak a few things here and there and, and make him a little more palatable. But here I am waxing on when I should be telling you about all, all, all sorts of things like BackstageSlam.com. It's a website to get caught up on everything that's going on in the Backstage Slam. I know it has been... I mean, it hasn't really needed to be updated by any means because all the social media links are there. I will be adding the uh, merchandise store there. But in the meantime, you know, follow me on Twitter at Skit Comic or follow at Semigore Studios. Follow at Yo Bro MMO because I know, I know Ben's here in spirit and he's probably listening to this at some other later date and I'll say Ben prove you listen to the show when you're not on it and send me a Facebook mes- message that says um hmm what should we make him say what should we make him say something that I like something that he hates or just be fair and okay um Ben if you're listening to this you have to send me a message that says Naito is my god you know what you might just randomly send that to me anyway so that doesn't really prove anything mm, you know what I'm, I'm just gonna stay Send send me a Facebook message that says Naito is my god, and then I will know 
you not only listen to the show, but you listen to the end. And I'll give you till... Hmm, Monday, right before Raw starts. Yes. Yes, my evil plan is coming together. <laughs> uh, you can follow me, like I said, uh, at Skit Comic. Um, go to the Facebook page at Semicore Studios. Give it a like. We do streaming there now. Yeah. There's people watching. Not my face, by any means, but definitely a graphic that I put up. Um, you know, I better change that back as a matter of fact. And, you know, we, we get the, the live chat going uh, during during the, the, the program. And, you know, spark up some conversation. So if you want to join for the live chat every Saturday night here at 10 p.m., 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Hawaiian, then by all means, the Simicor Studios Facebook page is the place to do that, or SimicorPods.com, where you can join the uh, Spreaker live chat, where we broadcast live at the time that I just said. But if you're listening on a delayed basis, where you download the episodes and listen to whatever the hell you want, um, by all means, rate, review, subscribe, and let the people know what you think about the Backstage Slam. And help us, help us move up in the ranks of the algorithms and whatnots. Um, buy some merchandise if you feel, so, so, if you feel like it. Uh, Semicore Studios is going to have its own Patreon up and running soon. Um, some of it's going to have to do with the Wadcast. Some of it's going to have to do with the Backstage Slam. And some of it's going to have to do with the new new show about streaming yeah the netflix is gone but we're going to replace it with something bigger and better that talks about not only netflix but amazon um prime instant hbo plus disney plus we're going to cover all of the major bases and maybe we'll figure out what the format set of that's going to be you know uh doing one streaming service a week and uh, that doesn't make any sense because you know well, the bottom line is the only reason it hasn't actually come out yet, the, uh, a new show about streaming, is because I need to find a way to get all of this information. There are several sites that follow Netflix very closely, that follow their press releases, and they can give me that information about what's coming out for the month. Other places, I've been able to get, you know, maybe a couple of weeks advance notice for, um, you know a slate of titles coming and of course there are the press releases for specific shows that are months out um it would be nice if there was just some sort of calendar that I could put together and hmm that would be cool I'll have to figure out how to do that anyway uh this has uh been quite the episode in all honesty. Um, very, very glad to have everybody here tonight. I was uh, very happy to be here. Uh, joined by Amber, who had uh, cut out a bit early. Um, it's always nice to be able to talk to Amber. Should should be doing that. More often, as you should be talking to your friends more often as well in these uh, interesting times. I'm going to give special shout-outs, of course, to Ben. Um, you know, of all the things that I've heard of uh, when it comes to Internet connections in Hawaii, we've seen um, a rain knock out his Internet. We've seen uh, mudslides caused by rain knock out at his Internet. Uh, earthquakes knock out his internet, and now, <laughs> now we can say uh, we've seen reckless driving <laughs> knock out his internet. Not to laugh, Ben, um, but but that's kind of funny. Um, and Anna, Anna, who is um, 
finally able to, how do I put this, uh, uh, climb her own tree. I'll just leave it at that. So, um, I guess all I've got to say is thank you for joining us here tonight. It has been a wonderful experience, and I hope to see and... No, no, that's weird. Hope to hear from you guys soon and see you in the chat next week. Same bad time, same bad... Screw it, I'm tired. Too sweet! Too sweet!